In this brief video, I'm going to provide an overview of some of the different tools that the Federal Reserve can use to manage U.S. monetary policy. Now, of course, one of the biggest responsibilities of the Fed is managing the U.S. monetary policy, of course, and there are some specific ways that the Federal Reserve accomplishes this. Of course, with monetary policy, we're dealing with changing or affecting the supply of money, the amount of money in circulation, and the Federal Reserve can influence this a number of different ways. Uh, what I will do is highlight some of the different things the Federal Reserve can do, and in a subsequent video, I'll provide a little bit more detail into each specific tool and ultimately how that affects monetary policy and those sorts of things. Uh, so the first tool the Federal Reserve has at its disposal are what are known as open market operations. Uh, these are used relatively frequently. Uh, if you've been paying attention to what's been going on in the news, uh, the Federal Reserve just announced it was going to institute another round of quantitative easing, uh, known as QE3, uh, three being the number of rounds of quantitative easing that have been in place. And simply, quantitative easing or open market operations really are just the purchase or sale of existing government securities in an open private market. So what the Federal Reserve decides to do is it essentially states we're going to purchase X amount of dollars worth of a certain government security, uh, you, usually U.S. Treasury bonds or notes, although recently they've been purchasing uh, mortgage-backed securities as a way of uh, kind of uh, propping up the, the housing market and keeping interest rates low. And they essentially orchestrate the purchase of this uh, by wiring a certain a set of funds, whatever amount they decide to purchase, and then that goes and gets deposited essentially into the bank, uh, because obviously to purchase these bonds or government securities, someone has to provide them, and the Federal Reserve is injecting money into the money supply or market, if you will, that wasn't already available, so it is expanding the amount of money in circulation. Uh, open market operations are certainly a way to do that. Now, there are a number of different effects of this, uh, which I will go over uh, later on in a, another video, of course. But open market operations are readily used, but simply are just the purchase or sale of existing government securities, more commonly U.S. Treasury bonds or notes. The Federal Reserve can also use the discount rate in an attempt to manage U.S. monetary policy. Now, the discount rate is simply the interest rate that it charges its member banks to borrow money from the Federal Reserve. Uh, the Federal Reserve maintains a certain collection of funds that are available, and it can actually lend those funds to different member banks, um, but of course, charging them interest. Uh, now, each of the member banks, of course, or each of the Federal Reserve banks, there are 12 total, there are 12 Federal Reserve districts, and in those districts, there is a Federal Reserve Bank. Uh, they each decide what to set their discount rate at. Some Federal Reserve banks charge half a percent, some charge a full percentage point. Uh, so it depends upon the area that the member bank is involved in. Their regional bank essentially would set that particular interest rate. But it simply is the interest rate that the Federal Reserve charges its banks to actually borrow money or borrow funds. So obviously if the Federal Reserve were to increase the discount rate, it would not provide an incentive for banks to take loans and then essentially loan money out to consumers. When the Federal Reserve lowers the discount rate, it provides an incentive, essentially providing access to cheap money so that banks can in turn accept those loans and then lend money out to consumers like you and I uh, in the hopes that we would in turn spend that. And then of course banks can in turn create more money by using reserves and those different things. Uh, the next tool the Federal Reserve can use are what are known as reserve requirements. Uh, reserve requirements aren't used very frequently. Uh, there is a, an established reserve that our banks are required to hold, and this really is a percentage of transaction deposits that an institution is required to hold. Uh, remember, in the late 1920s, we had the run on the bank that obviously led to the Great Depression, and as a way of protecting banks, uh, the Federal Reserve requires that they hold and so for every uh, deposit that they take, they have, to, uh, they have to save a percentage on hand just to meet uh, withdrawal demands from their particular members. 
Okay, so this is meant to make sure that banks obviously have some cash on hand to meet the demands for withdrawals. Uh, so reserve requirements are the percentage that the bank actually has to keep on hold either on their physical premises or on reserve in their respective Federal Reserve Bank. Uh, so if the Federal Reserve were to increase the reserve requirements, that would make it so that banks had to hold more money on reserve, either in their vaults or on reserve with their Federal Reserve Bank. So this means that the, that the banks can't lend as much money, uh, which affects, of course, the money supply. If the Federal Reserve were to decrease reserve requirements, that means they're, in, they're allowing banks to lend more money than they originally were able to do. Uh, now, the reserve requirements are vary depending upon the amount of deposits that a bank has. Uh, typically, they're about 10%, and they have not changed in about 30 to 40 years. So the Federal Reserve does not usually change reserve requirements very much. It uses some of the other tools to manage monetary policy on a more frequent basis. The next tool the Federal Reserve has at its disposal is what is known as the Fed Funds Rate. And the Fed fund Funds Rate is the interest rate that banks or depository institutions pay to one another to borrow reserves. Um, remember, each bank has to hold reserves. And so some of the reserves are physically on hand in the bank or in their branch. But they also hold some of those reserves with an account they have set up with their Federal Reserve Bank. Uh, and so what, what banks can do is if they need access to funds relatively quickly, they can actually borrow from one another. Uh, and so this is done fairly easily. It's usually done overnight. Uh, and so it's used so that banks have liquidity so they can meet the demands for withdrawals, of course. And then the last tool the Federal Reserve has at its disposal are the interest rates that they pay on reserves. In 2008, uh, the Federal Reserve received approval to actually pay interest on both required and excess reserves that banks have on file with them. Before that, there were no interest rates that were paid. Uh, typically, the interest rate on reserves is about a quarter of a percentage point, so obviously not very attractive. And the Federal Reserve can use this as a way of either encouraging banks to hold more money or encouraging them to loan more money out. Obviously, if an interest rate is higher, then banks would have an incentive to hold more money on reserve and keep money with the Federal Reserve Bank. If rates are very low like they are now, it doesn't provide much of an incentive for banks to go ahead and actually have excess money on reserve, meaning above and beyond what they're required under their reserve requirements, because they're not getting a great deal of money. And so from a, a bank mentality or from their perspective, they think, well, I can loan this money out to customer XYZ and they can in turn, I can charge a higher interest rate from them than I can get being a quarter of a percentage point from the Federal Reserve Bank. So maybe it's not an incentive for me to actually hold my money on reserve. And in the current economic climate that we're in, this really is a reality uh, because the Federal Reserve does not want banks to necessarily hold money on reserve. It wants them to lend money so that we can in turn take those loans in hopes that we would spend them to inject money back into the economy creating demand for goods and services, and hopefully creating jobs in the process. So those are the five tools that the Federal Reserve predominantly uses to manage U.S. monetary policy. In a subsequent video, I will break down each of these individual tools specifically and explain how they both expand the money supply and how they contract it as well.